so real life, I have like a whole sink full of dishes I have to wash. But as I'm coming over to take care of that, I just want you guys to see what is a normal occurrence here on this little homestead. I just love looking out my window, even though I have a mountain of work to do, and there's always something going on. And I love this. And, you know, that view's not bad either. Straight from the kitchen window. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Now let's, let's get this mess taken care of. So good morning. It is morning. I don't know when this video is going to air, but for right now it's morning and you can tell the girl is tired. I look a mess, but we promised to give you real life and that's what you're going to get. So <laughs> speaking of real life, we shared a lot of raw real life last week and I just want to say thank you to everyone who's watched for all the comments, the shares, the just everything. Just thank you for that. Um, that story is not always easy to tell, but we're always willing to tell it just because it's that important and God was faithful to us and is faithful to us. And we we cannot forget what he's brought us through. So if we can be a source of encouragement and comfort and hope for anyone else, that's all we care about. So uh, we hope that for those of you who watched it, that you enjoyed that, that you can see us for who we are a little better. And know that we will never claim perfection because we are far from that um and we we just we're sinners saved by grace and i just want to share that with the world on any platform that we are given so um i realize that we geared this channel for uh, family memory's sake and homestead stuff um, but you're just going to get every aspect of us we won't leave out the all the jesus parts because honestly that's why we are who we are so thank you guys for for those of you who are sticking around um, I'm sorry that video was so long we're gonna try to keep this one short um, thank you guys for sitting through that <laughs> uh, there's just a lot to tell and uh, we just wanted to be completely transparent um, so now you know us a little better you know our past and uh, well now we're moving forward and hopefully prayerfully following the the plan that, that God has for us and on his path so anyway um oh and one more thing I wanted to say some of you guys have reached out to us privately kind of sharing some of your own struggles and I want you to know that we appreciate that we are here for you and we will not mention any names or any stories publicly but I, I did want to say that here just to say that um you you are being called out to the Lord. We are praying for you. We care about what you're going through, and we'll you know we just want to be for other people what we needed in those days and what we what God provided for us in those days through good friends and um, people who just rallied around us in a hard time. So um, if you have reached out to us public, I mean excuse me privately, um, you're nothing's been shared, but other than in prayer to the Lord and you can trust us with that and thank you for trusting us with that um, and honestly that's what it's about we are all struggling with something if not today look for it in the ne in the coming days or maybe you've just come out of something I mean this is a broken world there's gonna be struggle so let's um, be each other's strength you know the struggle doesn't have to be isolated and lonely we can we can do this together so we love you, even if we haven't met you, and thank you for, for trusting us with your heart, and 
we will pray. We commit to praying for you. So, And for anyone else who would like to reach out, our contacts will be in the description box. And so hit us up and we can't fix it, um, but we can sort of pray with you in it. So thank you for that. Anyway, moving on. Um, today we've got a lot to do. I've got a long list of stuff to do and I want to be as faithful as I can with putting out videos. So I'm just kind of drag you along with me as I get some stuff done. I got to package some orders that I'm very thankful for, so <laughs> trust me. Um, every order, every time my phone goes off because you want something that I have uh, that I've provided, um, I'm it's a blessing. Small business, I'm I'm serious. It's a struggle sometimes, and we we appreciate you. So I'll be packaging some orders, and also I want to um, I got to make some cinnamon rolls. I've been promising my girl. We got our girl home for the holiday. She's home from college. So we're making some cinnamon rolls because I've been promising her that. And uh, since I've perfected the recipe, I want to share that with y'all. And let's see. I don't know. Just a ton of stuff. So we're just going to tackle the list today. And uh, you get to go. You get to go with me. So thank you for that. And let's see what we can get done today. Okay, now for some fun stuff. We are going to get started on the cinnamon rolls. Um, what I did not record was the prep, mixing the dough and the prep, but all that's going to be on the website where I'm going to list the uh, recipe. So um, jump on to peppershacktradingco.com for that. Also, it will go out to the, through that website, you'll be able to get on our email list, and I'm going to send it out to our email subscribers too. So anyway here is a quick look at the dough after it has been mixed and proofed this is our sourdough um cinnamon roll mix and what i want you to notice is after sitting and proofing your dough should look like this see all that it looks stringy it even looks gross but that's how it's supposed to look that's what's going to give you the the yeast bread kind of texture and the rise um in your rolls so taking our dough we're going to mix our filling and um roll these babies out so the dough has to proof for um, 12 hours or at least overnight. So we're going to jump into making the filling now. Um, you'll need a stick of 
very soft butter and if you got it in the refrigerator just throw it in the microwave for a, for a few seconds it's not a big deal as long as it's soft to where you can mix up the um the filling and it have i'll show you the consistency it's supposed to, i don't like it runny that's one thing i changed from uh my recipe versus the one that i looked up is they would melt the butter and then coat the dough and then add the sugar and i like to mix it up and make it like a paste and just cover the layer of dough um so it and it just stays better it's a little there's a little more texture to it. I like it like that. So we will take a fork and I've got butter that's already been softened quite a bit. So we'll get the whole stick out, put it in my bowl. I also tweaked a little bit of the amounts of sugar and cinnamon too. So all that, this whole process is pretty much part of what I changed about the recipe other than some stuff I did with the dough we need four tablespoons of brown sugar four tablespoons of white sugar and three tablespoons of cinnamon if you know me at all, you know that I really don't like to measure things. I like to just dump it in. No, I know what it's supposed to look like and go for it. But with this, over time, I'll get better at it. And at some point, this will be that. But for now, I'm still measuring things out. Trying to memorize the recipe. Learn learn it 100% myself. But since it's, I've tweaked it and I've changed things and I've written it down as I went, I, have, I still pretty much have to follow my own recipe. Now look, this is clumpy. This is not what it's supposed to look like. So my butter isn't quite soft enough. All that means is I'm gonna throw it in the microwave for like 15 seconds and soften it up some more. Now that's more like it. You can see it's more of a pasty consistency. No clumps, just a nice thick paste that you can spread over the dough once it's rolled out very nicely. And it's not runny, it's not it's just a, I like this consistency better. This worked out good for me. I've taken some of my bread flour, the same flour that's in the dough mixture, and spread it out over my parchment paper. And I kept over a little bit, a pile over to the side to where I can add more to my hands as I need to. And now we're gonna pull our dough out and, and roll it out. It's gonna be stringy and sticky, it's supposed to be. This is what it what you want it to look like though. All those nice little air bubbles. The the natural yeast from the sourdough has had time to and gluten, I guess. I, I think not an expert. So if you know more about bread making than me, go ahead and comment. But I think it has get had time for the gluten to form too. So that's one, one reason why it's like that. But I have found if I make the dough, if I make my dough and don't let it sit long enough and proof, then it's more of a biscuit consistency when the cinnamon rolls are made and I don't really like that that's not a cinnamon roll to me it should be more of like a a nice soft yeast bread The goal is to get about about 12 cinnamon rolls out of it, give or take. I know this seems like a lot of work, but it's really not. I made these for my son's football team. Those seem to seem to have went over pretty well. I kind of use them as my um, guinea pigs, I guess, to determine whether or not I really was happy with the recipe. And my kids, at the boys at home before Sissy got here, they they said it was right. They said it was good. So for me, that's all that matters. Now we're gonna dump out our filling. 
quite proud of myself. If y'all know me, and for you that don't, I, this is just a fun fact about me. I am not a good cook. I haven't been. I've gotten better in my older years. Um, and since I've been a stay-at-home mom. But early on, I really didn't care. All, all I cared about was working. So I really didn't care about learning much in the kitchen. And I was the girl who, at every family, family reunion, when I would ask um, what I could bring, I, they would tell me, just bring plates, cups, and napkins. Because they really didn't want anything that I cooked. And I don't blame them. But, um... The older I've gotten, the more attention I've paid to it, I've gotten better. Um, Jeff could tell you some great stories about our earlier years of marriage where he pretty much only ate for survival just so he wouldn't die. <laughs> he didn't enjoy it at all. He just, you know, ate because he had to and probably to spare my feelings. But one time I... um no joke, I caught a skillet on fire in my kitchen. I didn't have any flour. So, my young, naive self. Oh, that story. So, I didn't have any flour. So, my young, naive self um, threw sugar on it, on grease. Not smart. Uh, I was like, oh, it's pretty much the same thing, right? No, it's not. Oh, so, that made a really pretty big blue flame and another time where I caught same skillet on fire um, I had I didn't know what else to do I just went out to my front door and chunked it out in the front yard because I didn't know what else to do with it that's how that's how bad it was so y'all tell Jeff that you're thankful he survived those years with me and, but anyway um, I'm, I'm really proud of this stuff the stuff that I, I can do now because of my history it is ba that bad so I'm really proud when I do something that works out especially when I've tweaked it and made it my own so really tickled about this anyway enough about that okay. let's roll it The end pieces are just going to be ugly. You got to just accept it. Sometimes I just trim them off and give me a straight edge to work with. Alright. Some of these are going to go in my iron skillet and some are going to go onto a, a flat baking pan. And I just kind of eyeball it and make them about maybe an inch and a half, two inches thick. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Nice. Now, how cute is that? We'll set these aside for at least two more hours and let them let them uh, proof again and. They will should double in in size. It's it's a cold day today, so my kitchen's not as warm as usual. May take a little longer depending on the temperature of your kitchen. So I will show you when these are ready to go in the oven. Okay, let's take a look and see. It's been a little longer than a couple of hours. Yeah, and you can see that they have about doubled in their size. So they're looking pretty good. We're going to stick these in an oven. Uh, 375 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes and then we'll get them glazed. So you can see these came out really, really nice. 
and we are ready to glaze. They've been cooling on the stove for about 10 minutes. The glaze is just a couple cups of powdered sugar with a splash of vanilla and milk. You could, honestly, you just get the consistency you want, but I just want it to be pourable. She's diving in, going for the one in the middle. I don't blame her. Because she's spoiled. They're terrible. Oh, stop. Yo! Don't act bashful. Be honest. For an honest review, how do you like it? It's good. It's good. That is it's good. A three. Yeah, all that goofiness right there. That's eight. what I'm talking about. You got the best one. You said eight. She likes it, though. It's a winner.